I made a review of the longer Orange 30 resin 3D printer not too long ago, and I have a few things I wanted to update you about that video and about that printer. Uh, first of all, I printed a Cthulhu statue as sort of the main project for that video. And since I've finished painting it since then, I thought I would show it off a little bit, give you an idea of the kind of things that you can make with this type of printer. I think it came out really well, actually. Now, I'd originally planned to show the entire process, including filling the gaps with putty. This is Tamiya putty. And sanding the putty down over the cracks to make it smooth and priming the figure. In this case, I just used regular gray primer and not filler primer because we didn't want to lose any of the fine detail. But once I got to the actual painting stage, I found that it was very difficult for me to actually photograph me doing it and concentrate on the painting. So I kind of gave up partway through. So you'll have to forgive me for not having any detail footage of that. I really just have a few cell phone photos that I took during the process. So we're gonna have to jump straight to the finished product. One thing I wanted to achieve with this was to not just use one color, one like green or greenish brown color for Cthulhu, but to add a lot of other contrasting colors like purple and orange. And I think that turned out surprisingly well on this figure. I wasn't sure if it would work, especially the purple, but uh, it gives it kind of an otherworldly feel. In the base here, I wanted it to look like corroded metal. So I added some uh, patina there in the form of uh, sort of turquoise paint that you apply and then mostly wash off, wipe off. I also made extensive use of brown washes, which are kind of like thin, thinned out paint that you apply that will go down into the crevices and details and accentuate them and also give you kind of a, a grimy look, which I thought was appropriate for Cthulhu here. I also uh, used some gloss coat on the rocks and ground here to make it look as if it were wet and in some cases as if there were pools of water because I thought I sort of imagine this pose as being uh, Cthulhu just after he's come up out of the ocean or something like that. So as I said in the original review, I'm really excited by the potential for resin printing because you can print off such high quality models uh, equivalent to things you might have had to get in a model kit in the past and, you know, just do it all there in your home. It's, it's really quite uh, liberating in, in many ways. However, I did experience some problems actually just after publishing the review. I was printing this section of another model when I realized that I was getting some weird holes that sort of go through the entire model from one end to the other. Now this is a hollow model, but you can see that these holes here are not supposed to be here. And right there on the bottom is where you can see all of them just going straight through. And I also had the same problem with some other pieces, like the head of this model was particularly bad with several places that are just missing. And because I'm not an expert at resin 3D printing by any means, I thought perhaps I had messed up something with the supports or some other setting. But when I tried running a test print, as you can see here, it turns out that there are a bunch of spots on the LCD screen that masks the UV light. And basically those are dead spots that won't uh, cause anything to be printed there. At first, it looks almost like something had been splattered on the screen, but no, they're just places where the screen has failed for whatever reason. Now, it's important to point out that these screens are considered consumables, so it's not crazy that it would fail, but I didn't expect it to take just a month to fail. I figured it would be a few months at the minimum. I did contact longer about this, and apparently, uh, I think maybe during the first several months, you are covered by some kind of warranty and supposedly they're going to be sending me a replacement screen, although it's been a while and I haven't received anything as of yet. When I first looked into this matter, it looked like you could only get replacements on some place like AliExpress, which is fine, but it takes quite a while to get anything from China. But then I discovered that they do also have them on Amazon just directly from longer. So you can get them from there. I went ahead and ordered one because I figured I'd be needing another one at some point, but it's been delayed a few times and I'm not entirely sure when I'm going to be able to get that. So, you know, this issue is something that you should keep in mind if you're going to be getting any kind of resin printer, particularly if it has a regular screen and not a monochrome screen like some of the new ones have. One other thing I wanted to mention was about resin. I had been using just the standard Elegoo gray resin. I like gray because you can see the details well on it. 
But I was recommended that I should try the uh, ABS-like resin, which is supposed to be more close to ABS plastic in its characteristics. And you can see here, when I put some pressure on these spikes, it doesn't just snap off like I would expect the other type of resin to do. It, it gives some, and it has a little bit of almost a rubbery quality to it. So I'm pretty impressed with this ABS-like resin. It's a little more expensive than the regular resin, but I do think it's worth it. By the way, uh, because I wasn't sure how long it would take to get the replacement screen for my other printer, and because I knew I was going to have to have probably two anyway to do some of the projects that I wanted to do, I decided to go ahead and pick up an Elegoo Mars as well. They were relatively cheap on Amazon. So I used that to go ahead and finish out the rest of this model here. Uh, do the rest of the body and so forth. And that's what we see here. This model is the Tarask by Lord of the Print. He has a Patreon that he uses to sort of distribute models monthly to members. And this is a very impressive model. It comes with a base as well that I haven't printed yet. So you may notice that I have the holes here in the tail. And I was originally going to try and reprint the tail. This one was done, of course, on the longer when I was having the problems with it. But I discovered that the longer is actually maybe an inch taller in its build volume, so it can uh, print the entire thing, whereas I would have to split up the tail somehow to fit it on the Elegoo Mars. And I just thought, well, I'll just use the one that I already printed and fill these holes up later on with some putty or something like that. I also printed one more model of his on the Elegoo Mars. This is the dragon turtle model. This one is at 100% scale. The one I just showed you, the Tarask, is 150%, so it's bigger, obviously. But yeah, this one came out really well. I've left the model and the base separate just to make it easier to paint later on. I really like this base. It's got a lot of cool details, like this uh, shark that's apparently been bitten in half by the dragon turtle. And here we have a dead mermaid being eaten by crabs, which I think is kind of hilarious. Anyway, I just thought I should follow up on my previous video and, of course, let you know also that I have some interesting ideas, I think, for uh, Star Wars-related videos using this printer in the future. So, until then, thanks very much for watching.